If we allow ourselves to kind of have access to whatever foods we want, then they kind of lose that appeal, those uh, forbidden foods or those foods that are uh, hands-off. We don't start obsessing about them because we can have them whenever we want, so they lose that appeal. This shit doesn't cook. Oh, hey, hey, bonjour. How are you guys doing? I'm really happy that you're back today for my conversation with Tyler. We're gonna talk about intuitive eating and its impact on your energy levels and your productivity. So on the menu today is talking about intuitive eating, the hunger scale. Tyler is going to tell us what she eats every morning and what is her food routine. She's also going to tell us her point of view on my snacks, what I use for snacking during the day before sharing some tips about intuitive eating. And make sure you stay until the end because at the end it's, you know it, the tete-a-tete -tete interview. You don't wanna miss that. So make sure you watch the video until the end. And if you like this content, feel free to like and share this video as usual. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. The interview starts right now. Hey, bonjour YouTube. So welcome, Tyler. Tyler, who are you? So I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and certified intuitive eating counselor. Mm -hmm. um, I got my bachelor's in nutrition and dietetics at Florida State, and then I got my master's in nutrition science at San Diego State University, which is where I currently work full time. And I also have an intuitive eating counseling business, okay. um, tylerrollingrd.com. So I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching on how to become more in tune with your hunger and fullness cues mm -hmm. so you can really make more time and space and energy for the things that are important to you without having to stress about what to eat, when to eat, and really just tune into those natural cues that we're born with. Okay, so we had to make this video together because we are helping people having the same end goal having more time and energy for the things that are important for you me really from a put productivity standpoint and you from more on the eating eating habit standpoint absolutely right. so we had to combine both and i'm really happy to have tyler here so can you tell us more about what is intuitive eating absolutely yeah tell us everything about it <laughs> So intuitive eating is really this whole mind-body approach when it comes to eating. So it all starts with um, 10 principles, and it's not necessarily that you follow each of the principles in order, um, but it starts off with kind of your thoughts about food and maybe some of the um, thoughts that are maladaptive mm -hmm. around food and body. Um, and then it goes into tapping into those hunger and fullness cues that we're born with, but we tend to lose touch with over time because of diet culture, which is that diet mentality and these really strict rules and regulations around food and body, which can sometimes take up so much energy and thought process that um, we're not able to focus on things that are actually meaningful and important to us. Okay, and do you think there is a culture like a cultural aspect to it. I mean, you know, I'm French. I live in the US for like two years. I see people at work like not really having lunch. Like yeah. they're, they're skipping lunch right. or they're eating like 10 minutes in front of the computer sandwich totally. full of carbs and everything. I'm not saying that it's better, right. but in France, we tend to have a longer time for, <laughs> right. for lunch, like sometimes up to two hours just yeah. for lunch. So, um, so do you think that these habits uh, eating uh, come also from a culture standpoint? 100%. Yeah, yeah, I mean, here, Western culture, especially in the United States, it's always go, go, go. Um, I see so many clients that their days are so jam packed, they completely forget to eat. And by the time they actually have time to sit down and breathe and think, um, or even feel, they are starving. And then that's actually one of the main reasons that we overeat is yeah. because we have allowed ourselves to become so hungry, so hangry, and low blood sugar. That is the Epicurean way of eating is certainly something that intuitive eating focuses on okay. and is taking that time okay. for yourself. And actually, let's deep dive into the hunger scale. The hunger scale is a nice reminder to kind of tune into your body and see where you're at as far as hungry or full mm -hmm. because hunger is not all or nothing. It exists on a spectrum. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, the number one reason why people overeat, which is 
allows, they allow themselves to get to a 10 on the mm -hmm. hunger scale, which is food coma, Thanksgiving dinner full, maybe you have to unbutton your pants. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. Um, I think we've all experienced it. Um, and the number one reason why people get there is because they've allowed themselves to get to a zero or one on the hunger scale, which, like I said before, is that hangry, dizzy, lightheaded feeling. So with the hunger scale, it allows you to tap into where you are on that spectrum to hopefully um, avoid being that 10 or zero one on the hunger scale. Um, so kind of in that happy medium where maybe you, you have some hunger mm -hmm. coming on. So that would be like a four on the hunger scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you're thinking a little bit more about food, maybe that you're salivating a little bit. Yeah. Um, these can all be signs that you might be hungry. So when, when it comes to productivity, mm -hmm. you are going to be your best productive uh, when you are in this sweet spot because yes. you're not focusing on I'm hungry or uh, like from one side, oh, I'm thinking about being uh, like food or anything like that. So you can't really be productive, you're focusing on something else. And on the other, on the other side, when you are too full, mm -hmm. then your digestive system and everything like is working, is, needs a lot of energy in Mostly. order to process. <laughs> and then that's like the, the falling food asleep, that's a, yeah, yeah. food coma. <laughs> and you don't want to eat too much during like, for example, if you're at work, you don't want to eat too much for lunch because you know that a little bit after you may fall asleep mm -hmm. in meeting. It happened to me falling asleep <laughs> in a meeting after lunch. <laughs> so you don't want it to happen, especially if your boss is in the same meeting room. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> not. I totally know what you mean though, kind of like dozing off a little bit. Um, so yeah, it, uh, the hunger scale is an excellent tool and it's so subjective. So yeah. um, it's really just something to use help guide those internal cues that you already have. Also, when it comes to productivity, uh, I get a lot of questions about, well, with intuitive eating, does that mean you just constantly have to be tuning in to your hunger fullness cues? And yes, that's a part of it. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't plan your meals or have an idea or time frame of when you want to stay fueled. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is identifying whether or not these meal planning and snack timing and that sort of thing is coming from a place of self-care versus restriction, guilt, and shame because the two are very different. Uh, so for instance, someone might have a super jam-packed schedule and they need to free up space to not have to really think about exactly um, what they want to eat in a given moment, which intuitive eating um, does talk about. However, if um, you do have a jam-packed day, there's nothing wrong with taking that self-care and planning out, okay, for breakfast, this sounds good, this is a snack that I like to enjoy, um, for lunch, this, maybe another snack, and then dinner. Um, but the point is to not be coming from a place of restriction and guilt and shame of, oh, I should have this, yeah. or I should do this. Um, and really just being compassionate and kind to yourself um, because that's what's more sustainable. I love this. So let's be very tactical. How does one day in the life of Tyler looks like when it comes to food? Like, do you have, how big is your breakfast? What do you eat usually? I, I know it can be different, but do you have like kind of a routine uh, or yeah. some uh, patterns? that you want to share? Yeah, uh, and I think, you know, we all love our routine. We're all creatures of habit to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, and full disclosure, I uh, pretty much have a bagel and cream cheese almost every day for okay. breakfast. Um, in love with bagels. And honestly, that's what I fi find satisfying. And that's a big part too of the intuitive eating process is finding that satisfaction factor in food is so important because mm -hmm. it actually allows us, research shows that it allows us to stay fuller longer 
because if we actually find satisfaction in what we're eating, mm -hmm. we're not going to want to go for um, the thing that we were actually craving or wanting. Yeah. So giving ourselves, my philosophy is kind of, you know, give yourself unconditional permission to eat the foods you want. Um, and, em tell me that. <laughs> and I know it sounds scary, but empower yourself with the knowledge to do so. Mm -hmm. um, there's something called food habituation. So if we allow ourselves to kind of have access to whatever foods we want, then they kind of lose that appeal. Those uh, forbidden foods or those foods that are uh, hands-off, we don't start obsessing about them because we can have them whenever we want. So they lose that appeal, oh. which is why the diet mentality and the restriction actually works against productivity and time management yeah. um, because there might be obsessive thoughts happening about the create The diet creates scarcity yes. that makes you want it even more. Exactly. Like the last That's mind-blowing. I never thought about that on yeah. diet. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. So anyways, back to, I guess, Your routine. day in the life. <laughs> yeah. Um, after the bagel. <laughs> yes, after the bagel. So um, morning, I usually am hungry within one to two hours of waking up. Um, if you're not hungry waking up, don't force yourself to eat something. Wait until you start feeling hung hunger and then I'll give yourself permission. Then my body just kind of naturally gets hungry every two to three hours. Okay. Um, and I think that took some time. I mean, it didn't used to be that way, um, mm -hmm. especially before I got into intuitive eating. I certainly um, struggled with food and body image and that dieting mentality and being restrictive with foods. Um, and it really messes with your metabolism, which can actually stunt your metabolism. So uh, I've gotten in this routine of eating every two to three hours because that's just when my body is hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have like a real big lunch, right? It just depends. Sometimes yeah. I do, sometimes I don't. It just, it really depends on the day. And what um, do you eat? Like when you have snacks, mm -hmm. do you eat like, I don't know, nuts? Do you need... Yeah, so I... I educate on, I call them fulfilling snacks, so um, kind of the outline of what that looks like is some sort of food that is going to have protein, mm -hmm. and then another food that's going to be high in fiber, whether that's a complex carbohydrate, a whole grain, it could also be fruit with the skin and vegetables, right, because those have fiber. So the protein and fiber combo, I call them the dynamic duo. Mm -hmm. So they help to keep you fuller longer and sustain your energy levels and also help regulate your metabolism. So an example might be a slice of whole grain toast with peanut butter. Because okay. peanut butter has protein, whole grain toast has that fiber and carbohydrate. Okay. Let's do a test. I have my snack and you're gonna tell me if it's good or not. Okay. I have my snack that I mostly, most of the time eat when I'm hungry. Okay. I'm sure it's not the best snack I could have, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to do any promotion, but it's a protein bar. Okay. So what do you think if I have this maybe at like four in the afternoon because uh, I'm hungry and I, it will keep me, my hunger uh, down. Satiated. Yeah, satiated yeah. up until um, uh, my dinner. I think that's absolutely necessary. I mean, if you're feeling hunger coming on and you know that you still have work you need to do, um, nothing wrong with having a protein bar. Mm -hmm. I'm not the food police. I try to stay away from saying that foods are good or foods are bad. Yeah. So it's really tuning into um, what foods you find satisfying for the most part um, or within a given moment. What sort of textures, flavors, temperatures of food do you enjoy? And sometimes we are so busy, and that's when I was talking about mm -hmm. the self-care. That yeah. is absolutely coming from a place of self-care, it sounds mm -hmm. like. Uh, because you know that you still have work you need to get done, um, but you're also not going to um, stay full until dinner, and you don't want to overeat at dinner. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. So, as a summary on that hunger scale, I'm going to yeah. just put this aside. You don't want to be like too low and then too high and then too low and too high like this you want to be just around the sweet spot as much as possible yeah that's a perfect way to put it yeah. okay however don't get don't be hard on yourself mm -hmm. if you do happen to 
kind of create those fluctuations because we are only human and yeah. we're not perfect and there's going to be days where we don't always get it right and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. especially around Christmas and, uh, and also Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. So um, do you have any specific tip you want to you share? Like very, very tactical tips. Yeah, so if I had to make it simple, I would say, you know, figure out what hunger and fullness feels like for you. Take some time to take note of, you know, is it your stomach grumbling or when you're full? Um, another tip that I usually recommend is while you're eating, ask yourself, if I were to take one more bite of what I'm eating, is it gonna send me over the edge um, to that place of fullness that's uncomfortable? So kind of checking in with yourself while you're eating. Um, and another tip would be supplying your house or your workplace with foods that you enjoy eating and also have, you know, a nutritious component to it as well because we know that food impacts the way we feel. So it's important to have those foods on hand because of that uh, food habituation I was talking about and that last supper that we don't want to feel scarcity. Yeah. We want to have that abundance sort of mentality um, to where we're free to eat when we want and what we want. And I have one last tip to share because when you share this like, infographic yes. with this, uh, this one to ten scale, mm -hmm. I actually put it, I, I knew that this, is, this was something that I need, needed to be better on. So what I did is I put it as a wallpaper, a yes. screensaver on my phone. So whenever I had my phone right next to me when I was eating, yeah. I was looking, looking at my phone, okay, where am I? And I, I was yeah. like assessing where I was on that yes. scale. It helped and then uh, we got Luca and then the, the screensaver, <laughs> screensaver is actually a picture of my baby. Yay. So it's not, it's, it's not there anymore. But uh, I'm gonna link uh, in, below this video uh, a full picture, a uh, full picture of that, uh, of that yeah. um, scale maybe it's going to help you too yeah no that's i love that you bring that up because i recommend that to clients especially when we're working on that um, assessing hunger and fullness mm -hmm. is to use it as their screensaver or their wallpaper um, and the awesome thing is is that the more you kind of get in touch with it the less you need it exactly um, and hopefully that's what you experienced as well a little bit i'm so yeah. bad i have i have such a I, it takes practice I'm not saying unhealthy relationship with food, but I love food so much. This is something I really enjoy. As you should. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I overeat like most of the time. <laughs> but then I do a lot of sport to actually compensate and not, and not, to, uh, like not, not to get bigger. Yeah. Well, that's a different conversation, <laughs> but yeah. So are you ready for the tete a tete? I don't know what that is, but let's go for it. Come on, you don't know? It's not, it's not the first time I do this on the channel. You guys know what it is. I put my French berry on, and I ask you, tete a tete means head, heads up, or okay. like head to head. Okay. And I'm gonna ask you very quick questions. Okay. So I have all them okay. listed. So, and you need to just <laughs> quick fire, okay, quick fire. Okay. Dogs or cat? Dogs. More money or more sleep? More m sleep. Okay. Sweet or salty? Actually, more money. Um, <laughs> uh, salty. Morning or night? Mm, night. Favorite YouTube channel? Yours. <laughs> that's, the, that's the right answer. <laughs> How many cups of coffee a day? Um, one to two. Okay. When? Morning? Morning. Okay. Favorite cheese? Favorite cheese, Gouda. Gouda. White wine or red wine? Red wine. Okay. Most famous French person that comes to mind? Can't think of one, but the Epicurean style of eating, which is that French style of eating is... Yeah, I love it. It's really part of the culture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how many hours of sleep do you get each night? Uh, I try to get seven to eight. May, might range from six, seven, eight. <laughs> Say something in French. Bonjour. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, with good accent, I have, okay. to, I have to be honest. Oui, oui. <laughs> Stereotype about French people. Um, <laughs> your hat? Yeah, the beret. Beret yeah. is a stereotype. And like... The moustache. Yeah. yeah. I tried to grow the moustache. Uh, Shiri does, doesn't like it mm. like, at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the book currently on your nightstand? Mm, book currently on my nightstand is being 
a badass at making money or something. I forgot the title. You are a badass. It's, Isn't it? it's Jen Sincero. Yeah. You're a money making badass or something on those lines. I forget the full title, but that's, that's what I mean. Okay. Uh, what's your mantra or phrase you live by? Mm. You are a light in this world. Don't let anyone fade that. I like it. Uh, what's your kryptonite? Kryptonite, however. Not being able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your biggest pet peeve? Mm. Being inauthentic or like phony. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So thank you, Tyler. That was fun. And I also learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot too. Uh, how can people find you? So people can find me by checking out my website, uh, tylerrollingrd.com or they can also find me on Instagram at tyler.rolling.rd. Do you want to say anything else before we close? It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for having me and allowing me to spread the message of intuitive eating. It's been great. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget, oh, by the way, to subscribe to the channel. I hope you really enjoyed my conversation with Tyler and see you next week. Au revoir.